IKEA hacks are famous. In this video, I ask myself which IKEA products a typical maker can use for his projects. Of course, I will show you which one I own and how I use them. And I will share a discovery with you. Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you will always sit in the first row. Mass production, also called economy of scale, can create products with outstanding quality at reasonable prices. For me, IKEA is one of the masters in this discipline. We makers can profit because some of their products are dual use, for the family market and for our projects, like my recent discovery. When I searched for a box for my light sensor, I had two requirements in mind. It should be as transparent as possible for the various light sensors. And it will be placed outdoors. During a visit to the near IKEA shop, by chance I discovered that they have a new line of boxes. The IKEA 365 Plus family. You get a whole range of different sizes and two materials. I immediately was attracted by two things. You get them in glass and they can be hermetically sealed. This sounded ideal for my light sensor project on my roof. I decided to buy this round jar with a glass lid because it looked nice. It should be waterproof and I printed a holder for my sensors. It worked somehow, but I discovered two flaws. First, it was not waterproof in real life. Fortunately, the electronics did not touch the bottom so it stayed dry. But I wouldn't say I liked the fact. And number two, the board I used also consumed too much energy, which depleted my battery in a month or so. Because the light sensors anyway had to be in the sun, I decided to add solar power to the equation. Now I had two possibilities. Two parts, one with the sensors and an external solar panel or one box with sensors and solar panel. An external panel would create the problem of how to get the energy into the waterproof sensor housing, and an internal panel would create a problem of space in this relatively small and round jar. I already had a solar powered device in my garden, this LoRa satellite ground station. Initially, it came without solar panels. This is why I added a plain panel without overthinking. Unfortunately, this did not work out. The unprotected panel did not like the weather. This covering is non-removable and derogates the harvested energy a lot. So I learned that I needed protection for the solar panel too, and not only for the sensors as initially planned. I assume that such ready-made solar panels would have such built-in protection. Fortunately, IKEA sells other form factors of the same organizer family. And I discovered they have an even better lid. One made of propylene plastic with a silicone seal. Perfect for my project. Again, I printed a fitting holder for my sensors, the solar panel and the battery. This time I turned the box upside down because I wanted the glass on top. And it worked out fine. So far, I did not discover any humidity inside. The glass seems to let IR, UV and the standard RGB through and the solar panel gets plenty of power. I probably could have lift with a smaller panel, but we will see how much energy it will deliver during the winter. Just a remark to the power consumption. My light sensor queries the internet for sunset and sunrise. Then it starts a long sleep one hour after sunset until sunrise to save energy. It is quite obvious which values it would transmit during the night. If you fear humidity, you can add a silica bag to absorb it and keep the electronics completely dry. There is one caveat with the design. Because it has to sit in direct sunlight, it heats up considerably. I did not measure the temperature during summer but I assume it will get in the range of 100 degrees Celsius. Too much for Lyon batteries. 
In my opinion, there are two possibilities to reduce this problem. Either paint the non-needed parts with a white or reflective color, or to cut holes into the bottom, and add small legs to allow ventilation, which would jeopardize the waterproofness. Maybe you have another idea on how to reduce that problem. I have to say, my setup survived the whole summer without issues, but I live in Switzerland, not in Africa. If you do not need glass for your projects, you get the same boxes made of propylene plastic. Then everything is of the same material and much lighter. The waterproofness is the same because both share the same lid. Such boxes can be deployed everywhere. And I'm pretty sure they are better than these traditional boxes made for electronic projects. And they are a lot cheaper. By the way, I will change the housing of this ground station because I had some issues with humidity. And I need a little more space to place the panel inside the box. This is the antenna with free sight to the satellite. It must not be covered by a solar panel. Fortunately, I got the boxes in different sizes. And here is my new satellite ground station. Even better looking than before. What other IKEA things do you find in my lab? For sure, these drawers. They are sold as kitchens and carry a 20 year warranty. Incredible. The only thing I had to do is to cut 10 cm off at the top to get the bench to the right height. Kitchens are made to work upright. Inside the drawers you find two things from IKEA. The bamboo cutlery tray, which is perfect for my tools. It also looks nice. If you do not want to spend that money, you get a similar tray in plastic. I use these for smaller materials. For bigger materials in drawers, I use these boxes. They are convenient because you can take them with you to the bench if needed. The last and most essential boxes are the ones I use for my projects and big material. I use two sizes and mark them with my brother label printer because the contents sometimes change. Price performance is excellent and they stack to quite a height, perfect for somebody like me. I mostly use rechargeable nickel metal hydride batteries from IKEA because they are proven and keep the capacity promise for a fair price. There even are rumors that the same factory produces them as the expensive Eneloop batteries. At least both are made in Japan, which is rare these days. Of course, the non-rechargeable AA and AAA batteries also come from either IKEA, Aldi or Lidl. Multiple battery tests prove their superior price performance ratio. IKEA also sells CR2032 batteries. You see, the package is already nearly used up for various gadgets, not only in the lab. I will not cover this USB charger or this power bank. The USB charger has a unique design with a detached power brick, and the power bank comes with a trusted capacity. And this is quite important these days, especially with batteries from China. I already covered IKEA's Zigbee products in other videos. By the way, I created a playlist for the IKEA stuff, which should be visible now. The last thing is this cheap table, often used by Prusa 3D printer owners. If Great Scott would ask me, do it yourself or buy? I would answer in a split second, buy, because it is so cheap. These are my favorite things from IKEA. What are yours? Please share your ideas in the comments. As always, you find the relevant links in the description. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. Thank you. Bye.